I have no idea if this will work. None at all. Hey, Twitch is starting. Hey, we're on Twitch. There we go. And YouTube is starting. Da Did I get it right on the first try? I may have. Just too smart for your own good. And hot damn, we are live. Look at that. <laughs> Welcome to Talking Heads, episode 26. I'm Jeff. I'm Rhett. Awesome. Oh, I'm excited. Uh, I changed like everything in my live stream setup this week <laughs> with no real ability to test it without going live. Um, at the moment, this isn't live yet, but let me see if I can fix that. Um, monitor, maybe. No, it says we're still not there. I'm trying to get the chat active because I have a chat window here. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Huh? Maybe? Uh, test? No, nope, these nope. are people talking back to you. Interesting. No, I think that's a demo. Oh, launch. Is that going to work? Connected all two channels. Woo. Waiting for new messages. Hot darn. Feel free to message us. Hit us up in chat. And uh, you could be the first one that's right. to be received on this epic new <laughs> chat window. Unified chat window. So we can actually both read what's right. going on. I was wondering... Wait, did you do that last week too? Or I did this not. Is new? This is oh, new. Never mind. Hey, it's there. Boom! One works. And do I have two? Well, do I have two? You guys all missed out on being the first. Jeff beat you to it. That's right. Uh, well, Twitch is going there. YouTube still is not. Oh. Interesting. Well, okay. We're, we're screwed. Well, we're halfway there. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, Jeff, what's up? What's up indeed? Welcome to... Episode 26. The best of the episodes. The best of all episodes. Or if you're on Twitch, episode one. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ah. uh -huh. oh, Red, you are episode one on both. It, John. That's what right. up? You are episode one in both. <sighs> hey, hey, we got both. Look, at yes. YouTube started coming. Yeah. There we go. First try, hit them both. I am so excited. Yeah, we, we switched <laughs> from OBS to XSplit. We activated Twitch. We have a unified... Uh, uh, chat stream now. Um, I changed my lighting. I changed my camera settings. Um, I changed my mix board and my microphone placement. <laughs> Literally everything is different, so I'm I'm very excited. Let's uh, let's get the stove sharded absolutely the right way. Let's do, do you, it. What do you say? You want to do the growler first, or you want to hit uh, pirate stout first? Look, you can't go wrong with a little bit of pirate stout. So all right. I'm all on board with that. Pirate stout, it is. Although, um, look, for being honest, I mean. There's something else that we need to do pretty soon. I don't know when you want to do it, but it's over there. That delightful looking. Oh, that's right. Yes, we do. Tell you what, let's pour this and let's hit that. All right, I agree. Because I already opened it. So. Yep. <laughs> so this is the uh, Sandy Am Pirate Stout. Um, I had one of these uh, in the Governor's Reserve Edition with John uh, quite a few streams ago. Um, but this is a local favorite from Sandy Am. It is an eight point. It's an 8.0% rum barrel aged coconut stout. And it is absolutely delicious. Oh, that is good. Mm. Oh, I love that smell. God, it's like you can taste the peanut butter right off the knife. But for those of you who uh, follow the show, who, who follow the live stream, uh, Joe was one of my regulars on this show, and we absolutely love Joe. Uh, he jumped on to the live stream about 20 minutes early, and he went ahead and dropped a donation down. For some shots. So uh, he said something fruity, something good. Uh, kind of my choice. I don't have anything fruity that I really want to shoot. I've got some uh, uh, some weird things. Uh, like I've got some liqueurs and whatnot, but they're not good shooters. Uh, we're going to go and do my uh, my Kula uh, spice drum or dark rum direct from uh, Hawaii. So, Joe, this is to you, my friend. As always. Is this a duplicate beer? Uh, this is not a duplicate beer because this is not the Reserve Edition. This is not the Governor's Reserve Pirate Stout. This is just the Pirate Stout. The Governor's Reserve, they age a little bit more. Um, it comes in a real fancy bottle. This is their tried and true regular release Pirate Stout. So it is not technically a duplicate. So, <laughs> And it sounded really good and I wanted it. And it, damn it, it's my show and I'll do what I want. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. And cheers, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Uh, 
Ooh, that's good. Oh, yes. It's delicious. Yes. I can imagine myself now <laughs> running a trade empire, harvesting sugar cane, uh, shipping it in boats that I own, exploiting cheap labor. Rhett, we know the rum would always be gone. <laughs> You're right. That's why I could never run a rum, rum empire. <laughs> Oof. Hey, thank you. Um, I, I know I looked this up at one point. What your uh, it's 1837, isn't it? 1937. Was he born in 1937? I don't think so. Uh, hello, hello, everyone. Hello, everyone who's saying yo, yo, Aaron, yo, Osgeld. Uh, so this is the young version. You're molesting a young beer. That's exactly right, Steve. We are uh, <laughs> drinking a beer before it's prime, although it is still quite delicious. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do prefer my alcohol old enough to drink itself, but you yeah. know, beggars can't be choosers. That's true, especially in a scotch. Yeah. No. <sighs> drinking rum, drinking mm -hmm. rum barrel-aged coconut stout. Although I'll, I'll take age of consent on a scotch. I'll take 16. <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd take a lot worse than that. That's right. <laughs> if we're going to continue this. <laughs> 1937. Yep, I was, I was half right. All right. Well, there's no one on Twitch. <laughs> You're the only person watching Twitch. So, yeah, there's no one on Twitch chat yet. All right. Well, here, I'll, I'll put a shout out on my on my own <laughs> waves, too. So keep t keep talking. Don't let me hold you up. All right. Let's get into some beer news. Um, so we got a little special segment in the middle of this show today. Uh, we're going to get into beer news. We're going to get into the best April Fool's jokes, both for tech and for beer. And then we'll get into the tech news later on in the show. So this is probably going to be like a 90-minute show. Um, and I say that it'll probably end up being close to two hours, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to hold right up too much. So we're going to try to keep this thing moving right along. Screw it. Let's go three hours. Three hours. Let's go till tomorrow. Screw your record, John. <laughs> <laughs> I got all night. All right. So zombie beer. Um, this is a real beer that actually came out two days before. Oh, I'm going to sneeze here. Whew. Hold on. You just Twitch TV, Twitch.tv slash craft computing. Slash craft computing. Boom. Yep. Because I reserved it uh, the same day that I reserved the name on YouTube. I went, is this the name that I want to be? And I said yes to myself. And I went out and I got Twitter. I got YouTube. I got Instagram, Facebook. I, I reserved everything for my name. Whether or not I use them, I have them. <laughs> Perfect. Doesn't get so, better than that. Exactly. Uh, my Steam ID is craft computing. Nice. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I got everything. Anyway. So, but you didn't get craftcomputing.com. I didn't get craftcomputing.com. I'm sorry to open that old oh. wound up. <laughs> Dang, it's still bleeding. Uh, and it's always going to be. I know. <laughs> well, I'm not paying 2200 bucks for it. So I can't that. believe that somebody wants that Someone much squatted money. on that domain. Yeah. Yep. They're going to be sitting on it for a while. I'm okay with .net. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, so Zombie Beer. This was uh, announced two days before our... Uh, Oh, about a week before April Fool's. So this is not an April Fool's joke. Um, Rock Street Brewing Company, I believe they're out of Texas, I wanted to say. Philadelphia, excuse me. Close enough. So yeah, Dock Street Brewing Company out of Philadelphia. They announced zombie beer for the uh, season finale of The Walking Dead. And they named it the Walker Malt. And uh, what this is, is it's your traditional malted uh, beer. It's got... Uh, uh, brewed with, uh, what were the ingredients? Roasted uh, goat brains. Yeah, well, I was going to oh. get to that. I was Oh, so up. sorry. I was it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's an American pale stout uh, with wheat, oats, uh, flaked barley, organic cranberries, oh, and smoked goat brains. <laughs> Yum. Just like Mama used to make. Right. So here's a picture of their kiln <laughs> that they were uh, smoking the goat brains in. That seems like an awfully small load of goat brains. To... Right. Well, I think it's a pretty exclusive release. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are we on Twitch? We are on Twitch. And yes, it is nice. So, so yeah. Zombie beer for the uh, series finale or season finale of Walking Dead uh, called The Walker. It's an American stout with brains in it. Or as uh, someone I think in chat put it one time, uh, grains and brains. Grains and Brains. Grains oh, and I brains. like it. 
Yeah, goat brains, surprisingly common brains to eat. Yes. Have you ever had goat brains? I have not had goat brains. I have had some other brains, though. I've had, I think I've had cow, I've had cow brains and okay. tongue. I've never had cow brains. Yeah. Definitely had goat brains. Uh, yeah, grew up next door to my neighbors. They were Hispanic. They bought a goat, mm -hmm. plumped it up for Thanksgiving. Yeah. And, uh, and you eat every bit of that goat. You ate every bit. And my friend's dad invited me over because mm -hmm. he wanted to show me and his oldest son how to slaughter a goat. <laughs> and he did show me that. Yep. <laughs> we, we used to uh, slaughter the chickens on... Uh, on on my, my family's farm, so we'd lop their heads off. We it, it was a big day when you were slaughtering the chicken, so you'd set up the tarp, and each kid would go over with the hatchet and knock their heads off and watch them run around. <laughs> God, literally, so literally chickens with their heads cut off. It's so, like chickens is almost like an industrial type thing because it's like you gotta kill them, you gotta feather them, you gotta do so, and feathering the damn chickens is so much work. No, no quality options over on uh, Twitch. Interesting. Uh, there should be multiple quality options. Um, because the, the highest in stream is seven and a half megabit, um, but uh, it should should scale down pretty nicely. Um, I've got both streams going on my end and they're looking good. Sorry if you can't see it over there. Can you hear me on Twitch? <laughs> well, he can, I got the impression he was being like, ah, I can't see it. The quality's so bad, it's scalding my eyes. Ah, yeah. That's how I read it, but I okay. never take anyone seriously, so. Yeah. <laughs> that was a great face you made. <laughs> Uh, all right, more beer news. Uh, John and I talked about this one all the way back in episode 14. I had to go back and look it up. Uh, back right after CES. Um, that Green Flash Brewing was in a little bit of trouble. They had retracted their, um, their distribution network from nationwide. They cut out 32 states out of their distribution network. So they were basically going West Coast and East Coast. They were ignoring the whole center of the country. Um, and uh, so we knew they were in some financial problems, but uh, it kind of came to light over the weekend how desperate their financial problems are. Uh, they're desperate enough that Flash Green or Green Flash no longer exists. Uh, they oh. have uh, been liquidated by a bank. Uh, uh, they basically, the bank foreclosed on them, took all of their assets, all of their naming rights, all of their IP. It's all gone. Uh, with the exception of a Virginia Beach uh, brewery, which will be sold in a separate auction. Um, so basically they they liquidated. They're already gone. They, they do not exist anymore. They... they Posted an April Fool's joke that they were launching an airliner on the first, and on the second they were dead. That joke is what did them in, right? <laughs> so <laughs> just like Elon Musk and his April Fool's joke. So yeah, um, I I never uh, uh, never drank a lot of Green Flash beer. I'm, I'm aware so of. Them. I was gonna ask because I'm aware of them too. But what do they what what did they? Brew? I think they had an IPA that was one of their standards, right? Um, and I think they had a Pilsner that was also kind of popular. But uh, they they distributed a lot of craft brews as well as um, uh, uh, did did their own stuff as well. Like I said, they just opened a brewery in uh, in Virginia Beach, and they also had one in San Diego. I want to say, um, yeah, they had two different breweries. But uh, yeah, Green Flash Brewing gone. Too bad. Yep. That'll be a lesson. Yep, exactly. No jokes. Uh, basically what happened is they built the Virginia Beach Brewery and overexpended their capital. And then they said the overall decline in the craft beer market, which means they couldn't keep up with the rest of the craft beer market. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, and let's see. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, this one this was, was interesting. Yeah. And what's funny is I read this and... Uh, and I went to post it in our show notes, and John beat me to it by about 20 minutes. <laughs> I was like, ah, I thought I had him on something. Um, Budweiser and Jim Beam are making a beer together uh, called the Budweiser Reserve Copper Lager, which will be out this fall. And it is a special brew of Budweiser that has, so they're, they're standard Pilsner, that has been aged in Jim Beam bourbon barrels. Um, they're trying. We'll see. They're trying. We'll uh, see. I'll, I will try this. I will likely buy a bottle when this is released this fall, and I will try this on the show. And it will be probably the first bud I've had in about 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably, right? Um, literally since I started drinking. Like, I had a Budweiser when I started drinking. Um, so you know where I'm coming from. I, I'm not a fan of domestic beer. Not because I think they're absolute swill, which some of them are. Um, I, I've tried just about all of them. Some of them are absolute swill and they have no taste. Um, one of my problems is I used to work for a grocery store. I worked for a grocery store for a couple of years. And one of my responsibilities was cleaning out the bottle 
return machines. In, oh. in Oregon, we have a bottle return. Oh. We have we have a bottle deposit, and so if you return your bottle, you get it used to be five cents back, but now you get ten cents back. Um, the smell that was within it's those disgusting. bottle machines. Um, think of think of you you left a beer out on your back porch overnight, and and that skunk that gets to it. Think of months old Budweiser and Corona and Bush, and, and then in the summer, depending on the store, the machines are outside. Up. Yeah, sun's hitting it. Ugh. So and and so think of all that mashed up for like six months, and then rotting in ninety degree weather out in the middle of of the bay, um, and then having to stick your head into this machine and clean it out, and getting pricked by glass. It is the psychological thing. I cannot get over the smell of domestic beer anymore. <laughs> I just can't. Yeah, I don't blame you. I currently have a bet going with my older brother. We uh, we were doing a podcast where the point of it, we watch mm-hmm. bad movies, drink beer. He was a guest. I and, think he told me about that one time, yeah. And he, I, this, he, we probably brought it up together with you. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I had said something silly along the lines of, well, hey, like any beer worth drinking is a beer worth spilling because I had accidentally spilled some beer. Right. The point being, like, if you're drinking it, you're having a good time, right? right so right. you can spill it. Like, yeah. it's okay. And he's like, that's not true. <laughs> he was like, Bud Light is a beer worth spilling, and I would never drink that. And I was like, whatever. But that's not what I meant. Yeah. Anyway, we have a bet. He's got uh, four years left, maybe three and a half years. If I can get him to drink a Bud Light, he owes me a bottle of Lagavulin 16. So. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Ooh. So I'm... I'm. Tell you what. You, you bring him over sometime, I will sneak some Bud Light in, into a drink, <laughs> and we will split that bottle. Hopefully he's not watching right now. That's otherwise. right. Because that was my plan. He'll it's never like, come over. <laughs> he's actually coming over to like... or He, he, he was talking about helping me move this weekend. Oh, yeah. And I was going to just buy like six cases of Bud Light. Like, anybody thirsty here? Yeah. Just throwing them I got like lots, candy. man. <laughs> <laughs> just start checking them. He's like, oh, I need some water. I'm like, sorry, water shut off at the street. You got to drink this beer if you're thirsty. That's right. <laughs> this is as good as water. <laughs> We'll see, though. <laughs> I don't know if that'll go over well with the other uh, yeah. helpers. <laughs> so that's our standard beer news for the week. Uh, we're going to get into some April Fool's talk, because uh, there was some good stuff that came out this year. Uh, um, yeah. Being a weekend, uh, none of the tech sites did a lot of elaborate pranks. Uh, there were a couple good ones, though, I thought. Um, if you follow think uh, thinkgeek.com, uh, they... Uh, they sell a lot of products. Every single year they do an April Fool's gag. And so they'll usually come out with like a dozen products and they're all ingenious. They're pretty good. Um, so if you never follow Think Geek on April Fool's, it's amazing. Uh, this is their lineup this this year. Um, and what's funny is I found one of their items just randomly, their, their Klingon uh, alphabet fridge magnets, which I will totally buy if they ever produce them. Absolutely. Um, but uh, I started looking at them and all of the ones this year are gold. Um, there's the Rick and Morty screaming alarm clock. So the sun that comes over the bride, yeah. they're going, oh, this planet isn't so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so what it is, it's an alarm clock that rises over the horizon and screams for 42 hours. <laughs> you can't turn it off. There's a snooze button, there's everything else. All the buttons don't work on it. So so they have a video of this going off and, uh, and this guy trying to turn off the alarm clock and it's just screaming at him the whole time. <laughs> So that was great. There's the Klingon alphabet. There's the Jurassic World dinosaur this detection system. This is a good one. <laughs> so it's the glass of water with the with the rumble detection. God, that's great. <laughs> Early warning system for yeah. dinosaur attacks. That's right. Check yourself before you T-Rex yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the descriptions are awesome as well. So, um, uh, there's the Battle Royale uh, uh, drone game where you can uh, parachute your fighters down. Oh my god, 4D6 and me, stat yeah. discovery <laughs> kit. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> the best part of, of that image is like the tiny little character sheet there yeah. for Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, Rock'em Sock'em Tesla versus Edison. Uh, Bluetooth Pet Rock. That was also one of my favorites. Down oh there. my so, god, that's hilarious. Um, oh, and by the way, if you get onto ThinkGeek during the month of April, you can vote on these products, and the top-rated products, they will actually produce into real products. <laughs> they, they will they will do a limited run of these products, and you can buy them. Um, one of the ones that made it in years past is the Tauntaun Sleeping Bag. That's right. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, that that originated as an April Fool's joke, and they voted on it, and it originally and it actually came in a, a product. 
while the Star Trek Klingon alphabet fridge magnets is uh, a good idea, that's something that you could like get a 3D printer and just you make yourself. You get a 3D printer and make yourself. You totally could. I'm kind of leaning towards the canned unicorn meat down at the bottom. Uh, that one was a was a uh, product from years past. Oh, I and see what, it now. This was actually a. I believe they made this one as well. Um, yeah, they must have. Yeah. And, and it's a stuffed unicorn that's hacked up. Oh, that's great. <laughs> What a great idea. And it comes in a sardine can. Or a, or a spam can. No fooling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, never um, mind. That's already real. Hey, yeah. dreams do come true, folks. Yeah. No, it is a real product. You can buy that today. <laughs> you can totally buy that today. All right. I'm going to buy it. Yeah. Um, Quest so, card. <laughs> what's that? That's pretty good, too. The Quest Management Kit. Quest that's management funny. Kit, yeah. Those are all really good. Yeah. Um, this one fooled one of our resident bartenders. This one was really funny. Yeah, uh, I saw him S- talking S- about Surly this. Surly Brewing uh, found a way to produce crystal clear lagers, uh, where they used a centrifuge to extract the color but leave the flavor. <laughs> Which, if you're familiar with craft brewing, is how it works. <laughs> oh, God. Um, so, yeah, th- this one fooled one of our guys. Um, that was really funny. Well, that's how it works with pop, right? Like they can do it. Like I read that, like some of those new, like the life straws, mm-hmm. you can dr- the pores in this water filter are so fine that you yeah. can drink Coca Cola through it or filter Coca Cola through it rather, and what comes out the other side is clear. Right. You filter the color out. Of right. It. I, I've heard that for some of them. I I don't know if it's true. That might be a good test on the show one of these days. I would be down for that. Yeah. Because I think the two the two that I've se- the two filters that I've seen that yeah. touted for is the Mini Sawyer, which is yeah. It's like an inline one that you can put to a bladder on your back. Yeah. And then the Life Straw, which Life you know, Straw, which is the yeah. the, the Bear Grylls drink your own pee and you get water out. Of yeah. It. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, there were there were a whole slew of uh, of April Fool's beer jokes. As I mentioned, the uh, the Green Flash Craft Air that came out on <laughs> Sunday, and the company was dissolved on Tuesday. Um, there's the Spellbound Milk IPA, not a milkshake IPA, just a milk IPA. <laughs> <laughs> they're, cu- they're cutting out the middleman. Uh, this one was really funny. The Vermont style IPA, very Vermont. <laughs> the, the new very Vermont Alfalfa Tractor IPA, hazy, juicy, and very fictitious. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the image is just great. It's like a like a bunch of alfalfa that's been jumped in the, the top of a, a tulip. <laughs> um, uh, Kate May Brewing, the the floating brewery, uh, Copper Tails Free Dive Toothpaste. Oh, jeez. And the the Terrapin Bless You Spring Seasonal IPA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, think think about it for a second. This kind of sinks in. Oh so. my god. Gesundheit. Yeah, so all great, great gags. Um, so, uh, oh, that, I, I was going to jump into tech news, and this one had me fooled for a half second. No, this is also April Fool's news. Snapchat throws shade at uh, Facebook with a Russian bot filter. Basically what it was was a filter you can put onto your, your Snapchats, and what it was is it would automatically comment with a dozen Russian troll bots. Oh, <laughs> yes. <comments>. Oh, my God. <laughs> was that, that a thing that I like? They actually did yeah. as a joke? But... That's his great picture, comrade. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Oh, um, that's, that's great. Yeah. Which, uh, by the way, as of April 1st, Facebook had admitted that there were 50,000 Russian bots that were present on Facebook. And as of April 3rd, they had admitted, well, there might be like a million of them. We don't know. Yeah. The yeah. number just went up like crazy. And yeah. ever since last week with all the stuff going on with, um, you know, certain news personalities and all that, it, it, all of these yeah. Russian bots have come out of the woodwork to support these people who are losing ad sponsors and things like that. Right, right. It's just bananas. Um, If you're an old school tech, this one was hilarious. Um, Hello, YouTube. This. Today we're going to take a look at an extreme. uh, Was. This one was the one that actually fooled me for a half second. This is uh, a guy who posted a video of a uh, four way, four core 3D FX Voodoo 5 board with four AGP slots, which is a a real configuration. That is six Voodoo 5 chips on a single CPU. This bitch over here. It's this is the 32 five, nine Voodoo 5 9000. Five it's a 32 <laughs> way flexion. SLI card. And this card only takes. To which I actually <laughs> search for on eBay. Stuff. 
They got me that good. So the board looks amazing. <laughs> okay. Compared to this, uh, um, oh now. my god. So I actually watched this video for like five minutes. It's only like a seven minute video. So this is a real board so over yeah, here on the left. Over here on the right is their April Fool's joke. And let's turn it on. Um, so he turns on the system. The system looks like it posts. All the fans speed up. Now I should have caught on when he posted it up. That he posted it up and all of a sudden there's like things blowing around the room from the fan noise. The, the post-it note starts blowing and the bag on the desk starts blowing. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, and, yeah. and the audio is... Posting. And he's trying to talk over this thing. But it boots into Windows 2000. <laughs> he goes to device manager and he goes, so I have 32 Voodoo 5 cores detected. And I went, that is totally a legit product. And I, I, hook, line, sinker, I fell for this. I totally did. <laughs> oh, I for, love For a good five minutes after I had stopped watching the video, oh, I'm like looking yes, at I eBay and trying to find a job. Wikipedia on this thing <laughs> for like the most illegitimate card ever made. And I went, wait a second. <laughs> I went, wait a second. Hold on. This may be a fake. And sure enough, it turns out it is. But I this one got me. Uh, this one got me good. All the VSA oh my but God, can I run Crisis? So oh, contraire, my friend. Oh, you don't know. You don't know the depths to which this guy went. Oh, no. Here it is, Ronald! Oh, my God. Oh my god, this yeah. is amazing. They went all out. Like I said, I bought this hook, <laughs> line, sinker. I was all in. I was ready to buy one to put on my shelf. Oh my god. <laughs> That's yeah. hilarious. I like how he's so full it's, of himself. Yeah. He's, Lol. Sorry, LM yeah. Dixel. I said it on. However you want to say that. Can it run PUBG? I don't know if that PCB has ever given me a harder erection. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted this card like no card I have ever laid eyes on in my life. This is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I just love the added effect of the post-it note. Just like... Yeah. Oh, and the noise. Go watch this video. It's in the video description. It's just a direct link to his YouTube video. He only had 6,500 views. <laughs> and I stumbled across this. It was in one of my suggested right, front page uh, YouTube things. Uh, Take cover! Uh, this is... Well, he's filming himself selfie style. And he's trying to like do like a, a two-handed operation on keyboard and mouse. And so he, he notes that I'm going to have, right? have some trouble doing this at the same so, uh, time. Uh, no excuses. So, uh, yeah. I loved this video. I loved every minute of it. Oh god, that is amazing. Yeah. What a great joke. That's right. Thank you. He made the card from the Maximum PC ad. I believe I may have this this issue of Maximum PC. I have a stack of them like about this. I've got like six or seven years of Maximum PC. I may try to find that ad this week. Touching the uh, Testing the bitchin' fast 3D 2000. That's right. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, look. It's, it's, Next time, you got to dig out that ad, see if it's in there. I'm going to see if I can hilarious. dig up that ad, because I, I have six or seven or eight years of Maximum PC. Like, I subscribed from, like, 1996 through 2004 or something like that with no gaps. I And I have every magazine still. Yes. Um, I have the magazine from the original 1 gigahertz race when it was AMD versus Intel. Who's going to win? Oh, yes. From, from 1999. I, I have that... that that uh that article that was the time to be yeah. in tech don't mix beers and ebay i wasn't drunk when i watched this <laughs> uh but yeah don't mix beers and ebay that's how i ended up with a brand new camera and lenses <laughs> it's happened it was very late at night and i'm browsing ebay and i'm like, oh that's a really good deal on an a6000 oh that's a really good deal on a speed booster oh that's a i just spent a thousand dollars the other day, I had been drinking while packing up my house, mm -hmm. and I ordered like fifty dollars of Domino's. Mm -hmm. So you know, whatever. Uh, Jeff, check his uh, last April Fool's Day with the BF three D two thousand. I will have to look that one up. You know, though, it's funny for every April Fool's like tech joke out there. There are people who actually bought the DVD rewinder. Yeah. Uh, Think Geek a couple years ago did a Betamax to, a, no, it was a uh, HD DVD to Betamax converter. <laughs> so that, they took a dual deck and they they photoshopped it up to be a that's HD DVD to Betamax ripper. 
I love Think Geek. <laughs> They're just the best. Yep. Mix beer and Coke? Eh, no. What? I won't mix beer and Coke. Oh. Although, if you want to see some beer cocktails, John over at Hops and Brews and myself are going to be doing a, a, a beer cocktail series of videos. Um, and in fact, I think we're going to film one here within the next couple weeks. So watch for that by the end of April. We there will are, have uh, some beer cocktails out there. There are some delightful beer cocktails. Yep. I, somebody needs to, after that one time, needs to put some Forge Hot Iron into a beer and make a... Uh, a oh, no. The name just escaped me. Right there. It's right there. A flip? A flip. Flip. Thank you. Uh, we will do that sometime on the show. That'd be uh, I will do a Red Hot Iron. I will make a flip on the show. That, you know, that is one of my goals. You know, I have a forge. Do you? We should do it with the forge. We totally should. Legit b burning propane in there. Yeah. Heat it up like we're going to hammer it away. Yeah. And drop it in there. That's totally what we should do. <laughs> what about the rock beer? Uh, we may have to get some of that rock beer as well. I'd be down. Yep. This is like the third time he's brought it up in yep. chat. I, I know. So I, we have to. We have to. Yeah, no, I didn't mention it the first couple times, but I, uh, I we're, just saw. We're like fairies. If you tell us to do something three times, we're contractually obligated. That's to, right. So. But only if you pay. That's right. Pay first. Yeah. Uh, Cloud, I see you every week on chat. I know we're awesome. Thank you for watching. You're awesome. I love how we clicked at the same time. <laughs> that was pretty <laughs> impressive. <laughs> <laughs> We didn't even plan that. No, we're just operating on the same wavelength. My, today. how far you've come from uh, missing your... I'm Jeff. I know. Are you... <laughs> I'm Rhett. <laughs> I know. Well, I, now every time I know that it's my Wednesday, I, I, I start practicing. I'm Rhett. I'm like, I'm Rhett. Throw it up. I'm Rhett. Well, he thought... stands in the mirror for like an hour before the show going, I'm Rhett. Uh, today I had this grand I'm plan Rhett. since it was the April Fool's Day episode. Uh, I was going to hijack it and say, I'm Jeff. <laughs> Just I don't jump know. in there before me. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't, but yeah. oh well. <laughs> that would have been good. <laughs> um, so I I had a plan for an April Fool's joke. I'll go ahead and disclose this, and then we'll move on to the, the tech news of the week. Um, I had a plan for an April Fool's joke, but the climate of YouTube at the moment prevented me from doing it. Oh, no. Okay. Um, this isn't really beer I'm drinking, is it? No. Just kidding. <laughs> Yours isn't. <laughs> Damn, wait, wait, which one did you do? <laughs> There's no telling now. Oh, well. Oh, no, the green sticker's there. Dang it. <laughs> um, so I had a plan for an April Fool's joke, and I was going to include this in my, my video that released on April Fool's weekend. Um, but I didn't do it because of the current political climate. Um, since the intro of my show, since my very first video I ever filmed, um, I have been compared to the Forgotten Weapons guy, to Ian over at Forgotten Weapons. Okay. Um, I own guns. I, I own a fair number of guns, hunting guns, handguns, etc. Um, what I was going to do was I was going to do a complete Forgotten Weapons episode. And I was just going to post it. To, uh, hey guys, welcome back to Forgotten Weapons. Uh, today we're... To, I, I was going to ham the whole thing up. I was going to take all of my computer stuff down and put guns on the wall and in front of me. and every, just Oh, that would have been A complete that recreation been I don't of the Forgotten you. Weapons set. I don't but under you. the current climate, political climate, YouTube climate... I couldn't do it. I, I could not do it. Um, I, I wanted to. It would have been hilarious. I would not have included a beer in the video. It would have just been, this is Forgotten Weapons. I was also going to redo my intro. So uh, it's it's my same intro and same sound effects. Um, but uh, I'll have Forgotten Weapons in my font and like a gun with the, the magazine filling up. for the, Oh, yeah. That, that's <laughs> the really battery. clever. Actually. I had everything <laughs> mapped out for the, for the joke. I was going to go whole hog on it. I couldn't do it. I, I could not post it. I didn't want to get a strike on YouTube. I didn't want to drop half my users for being a gun nut or whatever else. <clears throat> I don't blame you. I love you guys, but I got this thing going, and I want to keep that exponential curve that I have right now. It, it's a good growth curve. Um, so, here's an accurate photo of Jeff and Rhett in color 2018. <laughs> it's pretty close. That beer is way too light. <laughs> yeah, we don't drink that light mm. swill. Although we do. I don't discriminate, honestly. I thought you should have started the video in Russian. <laughs> mm. Nazarovia. Nazarovia. Uh, yeah, they're going to take that video down, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, YouTube is not only against gun channels, they're against hunting channels, they're wow. against bow and arrow channels, they're against air gun channels, which have nothing to do with 
any kind of violence at all. It's it's target and air gun. You can watch air guns on the Olympics. They're probably a little gun shy after what was it today? Last night? It yesterday? Was Monday. Oh wow, Monday I'm that behind. Happened. Yeah, I'm way um, behind. Yeah, Monday or Tuesday. Might well, have been, it might have been yesterday. They're a little they're a little shy. Yeah, which which I don't blame them for that. But at the same time. It's still a legal topic to talk about, but at the same time, if their advertisers are pulling out, they have reason to not support that yeah, thing on there. Yeah, it's a business. Yeah, they it gotta... is a business at the end of the day, and it sucks, and we have free speech in this country, but like the XKCD comic says so much, they have the right to show you the door and say, we're not going to let you on our platform and talk about things that we don't agree with. Yeah. So it's their total right to do that. They could come down on beer channels next. I don't know. Um, I Hopefully think I would be don't. able to evolve as a channel. Right. Um, but uh, it's not like firearms are my business or beer is my only business. In fact, my beer videos suck on this channel. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get 10,000 views in, in three days on most of the videos I post. And then I post a beer vlog and it's like, oh, 400. Yeah. So. Well, some people. Yeah, air guns. Uh, Ted's Holdover is one of the last holdouts, but uh, they banned Pyramid Air. Uh, which is just a, a an online retailer for air guns, and and all they do is they post reviews of how to operate the gun safely and how to how to fire them, how to review them, and what the accuracy of the of the air gun is. They ban that channel. Pyramid Guns is gone. That's too bad because um, that seems like a very or Pyramid Air, excuse me. That seems like a very useful. Yeah, there, there's there's like twenty or thirty uh, air gun channels that have been struck from YouTube. Uh, like I said, Ted's Holdover is one of the only remaining. Well, so and it sucks because that's an entire hobby. That's an entire niche of people yeah. that no longer have content. Yeah, it's it's terrible. Well, hopefully they can find it somewhere else. It's just kind of a it's it's just the wrong timing for it. You know, maybe in a couple years things yeah. simmer down. It comes back. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. things things. Hopefully, you know, people have figured it out where everybody's happy enough. You, you, you know, know, you know, the interesting thing is. Uh, uh, everyone always says, who's going to compete with YouTube? Where, where can we take our content to to compete with YouTube that can deliver the kind of audience, the kind of bandwidth that YouTube allows? A lot of the gun vlogs moved over to Pornhub. I saw that, actually. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. I couldn't remember where they migrated, yeah. but I did yeah, see Yeah, they migrated that. over to Pornhub. And uh, if anyone has the, the video infrastructure server already set up to compete with YouTube, it's probably Pornhub. Yeah, their infrastructure is probably a little better it's probably <laughs> I, I would say at least equal yeah at least i'd say i love the statistics that they uh, rained out after the uh the m missile scare you know they sent out the warning that mm -hmm. north korea had fired a missile towards hawaii or whatever yeah and they oh, posted oh, the statistics, statistics where it drops yeah, but, but there's still some people but it drops to like 20 percent of normal <laughs> And then my favorite, though, is after the all clear signal. It goes to like 100, It's like 200. Yeah, I was going to say, it's like, wait. And then, <laughs> you just imagine people like, oh, thank God. <laughs> uh, someone says they have a Viper Nitro Express. Uh, I have a Crossman uh, uh, Nitro Venom. That, that's my air gun that I, that I use. And I love it. I, I, I plink within the backyard. I take care of the starlings that are out back because nothing says starlings stay the out of my yard like a bloody starling on a fence post. Yep. <laughs> you shoot a starling in your yard, they will not come anywhere near your yard for two years. At least at least in my part of the the, re the area. So. Uh, they're just like, oh God, he got mm. Sean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, seriously. You, you shoot a starling in the yard and you leave his bloody corpse on, like on your roof for, for two or three days. And then you go up there and you throw the, the bird away. Um, for for two or three years, I would have starlings land on my fence, but not come down into my yard. They they knew stay Smart out of this dude's birds. yard. That that dude's crazy. That's genetic memory. Too. Yeah. You got to imagine that just being passed down right. the line. And and I, I could picture one of them on, on the fence with his buddies, and one flies up and goes, Steve, no 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 no, <laughs> <laughs> don't do it, Steve. <laughs> Just uh, father bird takes his son bird out back and just spanks his ass red raw. Just like, you do not go into that yard. What have I told you a thousand times? You're we lucky got, this is all I do. We were on April Fool's and somehow we ended up on air guns and starlings protecting their young from the crazy air gunner. <laughs> that was a great, hey, great segue. Let's get into some tech news. It's, it's spring. So, it's spring, you know? yeah. Let's get into some tech news. Uh, one of the biggest ones that dropped that has been quite a few years in the making and coming, 
but this is the first time that it's been publicly disclosed by a relevant party. Um, and that is Apple plans to use its own chips in its Mac desktops and laptops starting in 2020, um, replacing Intel as the CPU that they've used since 2005. Um, there's been quite a bit of speculation on this for a number of years. Um, it first kind of hit the mainstream media about two or three years ago. Um, in fact, here's an article from 2016 that says macOS Sierra code suggests that uh, um, ARM processor that has support for ARM processors inside of the root code of OS X. Um, so that was the first time it was, it was kind of publicly disclosed. Apple's been on this path for a while and it was suspected that this was their end game since they started making their own silicon for the iPhones. Right. For the iPhones and iPads. They're A6 whatever chips. Right. Um, uh, they they like controlling 100% of their ecosystem. They want to control their own launch dates. They want to control the progression of their ecosystem. They want to control the hardware and software 100% wholeheartedly. Right now, Intel does not allow them to do that. Um, they have to abide by Intel's rules. They have to use Intel's off-the-shelf components uh, to produce their machines right now. Um, Apple's not down with that. that. That's not the way they operate. Uh, so, like I said, it was kind of suspected all the way back in, I think, two, starting with the iPhone it the 5S that had its first first custom silicon. Maybe the iPhone 5. I was going to um, say it was in the 5 family. For yeah, sure. maybe it was the A4 or something like that. Um, but anyway, one of the iPhones came out with custom silicon that was not designed by Samsung or, or any of the ARM partners, but designed by Apple in-house. Um, and uh, um, yeah, a Apple already uses ARM coprocessors for their security processing. Uh, so they, they've been experimenting with it in that scale. Um, they integrated the uh, same CPU that they put in the Watch OS or in their, their Apple Watch into the touch bar um, of the laptops. That touch bar is actually a separate computer from the main laptop. Mm. Not a lot of people know that. That is a 100% separate individual computer that simply talks to the computer and gets commands basically over oh, serial wow. interface. I had no idea. Right, exactly. So they've been experimenting with this for a number of years. And this, this is not a shock to people who are in the industry. Um, when this was publicly announced by Apple, when, when it was confirmed that yes, we would like to move off of Intel Silicon and onto our own, Intel stock plummeted um, <laughs> to, to the order of like 12%, I think. Oh. It's peak. Yeah. So Intel lost like $3 billion based on speculation from 2020. Wow. Um, and Apple is no, by no means Intel's largest customer, but they are a significant mover and shaker within the industry. Uh, risk. Risk is going to change everything. Hackers joke. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, I was reading chat. Rhett wasn't catching along, catching mm. up. I was trying. Trying. <laughs> no yeah. risk, no reward. Spark. Oh, Spark. That... I have a Spark workstation in my garage. I have a Sun Spark workstation. Really? I do. Mm. I have a Sun Ultra 45 out in my garage. <laughs> That's legit. That's right. Look at you. Oh, I will say. Yeah. See, wait. Words. What did me in <laughs> right from the start was... Uh, Mr. Our friend Joe Colvin uh, demanding of us to enjoy some fine, fine Hawaiian rum made with the purest sugar cane. Delicious. Absolutely delicious. Um, but yeah, so my brain usually starts quick. Yeah. And ends a little slower. Well, it started slow today. Yeah. So. <laughs> Sun Ultra 10 and a Spark 5 work session. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Nice. A uh, friend has a boatload of Tadpole laptops, all, all Spark. Very nice. I, I have not heard of a Tadpole laptop in the wild for a number of years. <laughs> that is very cool. Um, anyway, so you were saying, do you know what you were saying? Just that, thank you, Joe. Thank, thank you, you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Yep. For, uh, That's where I am. For giving us the, the rails that we took the show on tonight. For, for continuing to carry those rails. Yep. That's what I will say. We couldn't rightfully let you be such a boss and not toast to your mighty name. That's so. right. So so thank you, Joe, again. But uh, anyway, um, so yeah, Apple, potentially as soon as 2020, 
will be making their own silicon for Apple desktops and laptops. Um, well, if all goes according to plan, uh, good for them. That's there, there was for them. There, there was speculation when AMD was in dire straits like four years ago that Apple was going to buy AMD and start producing x86 silicon um, based on AMD platform, and that, and that would have made perfect sense for them. And I yeah. don't know if they were ever in talks, but it was rumored that they were in talks, and it was like late terms talks. And then AMD said, no, 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 we have some really cool stuff coming on the way, which ended up being Vega and Ryzen. Oh, wow. Good for them. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, uh, in an alternate timeline, we could be talking about Apple purchasing AMD three years ago and coming out with Ryzen exclusively for Apple. Absolutely. Just <laughs> three iterations off the finite curve. You and I are talking about that very thing. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Due to a transporter accident, I mean, we could be talking about that somewhere else right now. Ooh, absolutely. Absolutely. Of course, I'm a lieutenant here. The commander is somewhere else. <laughs> How far does your Star Trek knowledge go? It goes too far sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving right along. Uh, Canon this week, not an April Fool's joke. Uh, in fact, announced two days before, this was on Friday, announced a 120 megapixel sensor. And, and that by itself is like, oh, that's really cool. 120 megapixels on a still camera. Oh, no, 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 no. Not just on a still camera. This is a 120 megapixels that is capable of 10 FPS video. God, that's ridiculous. <laughs> if you can imagine the amount of bandwidth that is required for a 13,280 by 9184 resolution video, uncompressed. Um, oh, and by the way, 1080p is two megapixel. We're talking about 120 megapixel, 60 times the resolution of 1080p at 60 FPS. That's ridiculous. <coughs> yeah. So, uh, the images that they've shared with this. Uh, yeah, I'm interested in like what kind of, because the number one thing they're talking about right up there at the top is the digital zoom of that. So, so here you go. Here. Yeah, when they zoom, is this digital? No, this is, yeah, this is digital zoom. Oh my god. Yeah. That doesn't even make any sense. No, it doesn't. Why would you ever need optical zoom again? Right. So yeah, that's the image that they're able to capture on this one. 20 megapixel sensor. Look at that. No. Look at that. I refuse to accept that. <laughs> That's not real. <coughs> this is for uh, 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 yeah. seeing counterfeit money. Looking at the weaves within the fabric of uh, money. This is a Japanese yen. I know that because Nippo means yen. That's right. <laughs> Um, future applications. Let's imagine you go to a sporting event. So on the left is their 120 megapixel sensor. On the mark, on the left or on the right is a 1D Mark IV, which is capable of 4K video. Um, but I believe they had it at one at 1080p 60 FPS. Um, so here's the two images side by side. Again, you can tell the one on the right is only 10 FPS. Right. You can not only identify faces, you could read names off the jackets. Seven times zoom right here. So this is 1080p. This is 120 megapixels. Oh my god. So they're they're talking about not only bringing this to video and forensics, they're talking about bringing this to security systems. Having one camera that can zoom in literally infinitesimal. I can think of a hundred <laughs> scenarios in which something like that would be useful. Right. That is that's not only impressive and amazing, but yeah. also kind of frightening. Yeah. Uh, not a transporter accident, a temporal anomaly that was disrupted by a warp field. No. Our engineers are way more careful than that. Right. They, they had the deflectors calibrated properly to avoid such a scenario. Not only that, but they had the... Uh, oh, God, my brain. Never mind. <laughs> uh, our gel packs were all recently replaced. He ran a level three diagnostic. Exactly. Yeah. Not only that, but the... Our, our guy knows his stuff. Okay. I, w I wouldn't say put Scotty to shame. I wouldn't say put Jordy to shame. I might say put Miles to shame. Certainly Bellana Torres to shame. Every... Uh, yeah, I said Nippon is Japanese. Yeah. Bro. Uh, now... 
<laughs> Every Star Trek fan is going to punch me in the face. But uh, Are you saying imagine what they could do on Pornhub with the 120 megapixel <laughs> sensor? I'm, I'm trying to get a correlation for that. Yeah, they just have the video. And are we like, in the same conversation? <laughs> they're just like, zoom in wherever you want. Are we tying one to another? Are, I'm just I'm just clarifying. What is the name of the dish on the on Enterprise? Is the deflector like, shield. Oh, that's the deflector shield? Deflector shield. The deflector dish. Yeah, that's the dish. That's okay. the shield. Never Def mind. Deflector anyway. shield. Wow, well, I'm... Almost to the bottom. And so of the when they're cruising so. at warp speed, it can deflect things off their their bow to uh, right, so they can travel through warp without getting nanoparticles blowing through them at warp speed. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Uh, it also uh, has some internal functions as well. I don't remember the internal functions offhand. But they often use it for other things. That's right. Like doing things. Like uh, disabling shields on a board cube. Right. They or, do that. Yeah. Yep. Well, yeah, don't they use the uh, deflector dish? They totally, like, wreck the board cube in the first yep. episode with yep. it. Yep. They buy themselves three seasons. Mm-hmm. And then they buy themselves another four seasons. That's right. 10 FPS porn. <laughs> <laughs> but imagine what you can zoom in on. <laughs> um, wow, hey, that mold looks like it needs to get checked out by a... Yeah, doctor. I mean, it's a little misshapen. That, that looks infected. Strange color. <laughs> uh, how far off the rails are we going to take this? I one? don't know. I can't believe I forgot that you already mentioned the deflector dish as a... <laughs> Whatever. My brain. That's all right. I was there last week. Don't worry about it. <laughs> At a lower res, 80 megapixels, for instance, should be like 30 to 60 FPS. That's entirely possible. Entirely possible. Um, more tech news. Uh, we kind of knew these were coming out. Um, AMD announced at CES that X470 boards were coming out. Now we're starting to see what the board partners are producing. Um, <coughs> this is an article from eTechnics. Uh, great guys over there, uh, Andy and Pete, um, and Mike uh, also. Uh, but uh, this was also posted on videocards.com. Um, but this is a look at the uh, Asus ROG... Uh, Crossfire 7 X470 Cross Ryzen 2000 hair. series Crosshair. I say Cross Hero? You said Crossfire. Crossfire. Had my AMD tech confused. Yeah. Thank you. It's all right. It's Crosshair. Okay. Crosshair 7. I knew what I meant. <laughs> yeah. Trust uh, me, it's the only time I'll ever get to correct you about this. So Probably. <laughs> So Crosshair 7, X470, Ryzen 2000 series CPU. Sorry, there's a lot of numbers. Um, <laughs> uh, motherboard. Uh, pretty much what we would come to expect from a Crosshair series motherboard. Um, we've got the, uh, the metal uh, reinforced ports everywhere. We've got really, really impressive power delivery. We don't know the phases yet, but if I were to guess, I'd be a 12 by two. Um, so a lot of power phases. Should deliver a lot of power. We've got uh, a four plus a two port uh, uh, EPS power. So hopefully we should, uh, there's a lot of theories going around that Ryzen Plus or Zen Plus, which is the architecture coming out, that's the 2700X and the 2600X, should have quite a bit higher ceilings for overclocking. Um, we didn't quite see that with the, the Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, the 2200G and 2400G like we were hoping to. Right. Um, I kind of won the silicon lottery on my chips. I was able to get one of them. I was able to get the 2400G up to four gigahertz and the 2200G to 3.95, which are really good numbers on those right. chips. Right, yeah. Um, most people were struggling to get like 3.8 on them. Um, so, and, and I got those completely stable. So, but we're hoping out of the Ryzen 7 series and the Ryzen, and the Ryzen 5 2600X, to see better overclocks, and we know we're getting better memory controller support. Yeah. Um, like I said, I've I've posted my 2400G with 3466 memory. Um, the only Ryzen chip before that I was able to post above 3000 megahertz is my Threadripper machine behind me, and that's running at 3066. So I mean, just just a hair above 3000. We're talking about 3466 on a Ryzen 5 chip. So I I, I have really good expectations for Ryzen 7. Really good, and I, I can't wait to see when they come out. We don't have a release date yet. We don't have much more information. Um, why is AMD stuck with PGA on their CPUs um, besides Threadripper? I don't know. Uh, it's probably 
the manufacturing technique they're used to. Uh, AMD has done BGA before on some of their server chips. I believe the Socket G was a BGA or the Socket 34. I'm trying to remember my, my numbers back for server chips that I never used or handled or reviewed. <laughs> um, yeah, it was Socket G and, and the AM4, TR4 sockets. Those are, those are BGA. Um, <coughs> but... Um, yeah, I don't know why they've continued to stick with that. It may be because, I don't know, uh, some of their lower end chips are only a hundred bucks. And in that case, your chip may be worth less than your motherboard that you put it in. On the higher end, the motherboard's worth more than the, or the chip is worth more than the motherboard you're putting it in. It's it's just a decision. Um, it's the same thing as if you wreck a motherboard pins on an Intel socket. Don't damage your chips when you're installing them. <laughs> right. <laughs> so... <coughs> Um, this was interesting news. I'll touch on this real quick. Um, AMD recently released, released their 2017 uh, financial uh, holdings or financial information. And they said that cryptocurrency was only 10% of direct CPU sales for the year. Um, that kind of makes sense when you think that AMD is probably not selling direct to crypto right. miners. Um, and they're selling their chips to AIBs or add-in board partners. Said, um, and the AIBs are selling directly to crypto miners. So, Oh, yeah. That's... And we will likely never get accurate information from their board partners about who they're selling their, their cards to. Right. Um, the thing you have to remember about the GPU market is it's not just about, oh, the crypto miners are buying everything. It's that there's also a DRAM shortage going on, which is why your memory prices are so high, which is why you're paying so much for DDR4 memory. Right. It's the same thing with GDDR5 memory. Those prices have gone up and there's a shortage on those memory chips as well. Um, so, you know, I one of my clients recently just sold a plot of land to a crypto miner. Not a mm -hmm. plot of land, sold the building right. to a crypto miner. Now it's 40,000 <laughs> square feet. Mm -hmm. Apparently, the heat generated is going to be so much that he extensive renovations are going to be needed to be done to the building. Mm -hmm. And he was quoted by the power company that it was going to cost him one hundred and eighty thousand dollars a month mm -hmm. for power. Yeah. Do you think he's going to make money on this still? Yes. Okay, that's all I needed to know. <laughs> I just remember thinking, like, not mining GPUs. Um, in fact, I didn't have this in my notes, but uh, Ethereum finally reached a breaking point for GPU efficiency versus power consumption versus hash rate versus everything else. Um, it's gotten so saturated in the market that Ethereum is no longer worth mining on your GPUs. And in fact, I've been saying this for about a month now, every week on the show, GPU prices are coming down slowly but surely yeah. and miners are starting to sell their rigs, especially the personal ones. Right. Um, I am seeing today on the Portland Craigslist GPUs at retail cost. There you go. Not below retail cost. There's still used cards out there, but I saw a 1070 for $385 today. I saw a 1070 Ti for 450, and I saw a GTX 1080 for 550. See, well, and that's the thing. They're starting to get rid of the rigs, and they're mm -hmm. starting to sell them at regular old prices. Right. So I figured like the market might have been at such a place where, but I guess with that much square footage and that, I mean. Yeah. Um, what's coming around, though, is Ethereum on Monday announced that they have an ASIC miner, which is a like an ant miner that is more efficient than GPUs, that gets a higher hash rate that is more power efficient. Um, it does a 15 mH uh, a hash rate on it and, uh, and draws only 180 watts of power. And so you start scaling those together and you eliminate your motherboard needs overhead because it's just a standalone box that sits there that needs a network connection. I wonder if that's connection. what he's doing. Yeah, so um, so my guess is he'd probably be investing in Antminers. Be interesting, I should go yeah. I should go talk to him. Although Maybe he should be... invest in Kodak coin. <laughs> <laughs> to bring it back around to CES talk. I think he needs to get on some Doge coin. Mm -hmm. Doge coin. <laughs> I should go down and Such talk currency. to him and, and just Very see. stable, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I should go down and talk to him and see, but I'm sure he'd be surprised. Like, how did you know that I was down here? You know, it's yeah. such a weird thing. I mean, what's up, man? <laughs> it's like I, I mean, I, I didn't get a chance to actually meet him and talk to him, but mm -hmm. I was freaking cleaning out his building the other day, and I was just like, you know, collecting some of my equipment from there, and yeah, 
and hearing him talk about what he expects and then and then the fact that i mean the cost that he's buying the building for the cost yep. of the renovations yep. plus the you know his monthly like ta <laughs> property tax on the place not only that but his power bill and everything it's just like i don't see how he's gonna make money but again yeah. i don't know i don't know so yep um i know not personally but a friend of a friend friend of a very good friend um back east he just paid four hundred and fifty thousand dollars cash that he had mined in bitcoin for a new house damn it <laughs> Cash. I'm gonna say that again. Cash. A lot of cash. here. Here's four hundred fifty thousand dollars. I have a home now. Yep. Living the dream. Uh, not an April Fool's prank. Got to clarify with that. Cloudflare is going to compete with Google for public DNS space. Um, they launched 1.1.1.1 and 1 1.0.0.1 as public DNS registries, which means you are able to point your own computer, your router, your whatever else to 1.1.1.1 and 1.0.0.1 and get DNS resolution. Um, the reason everyone uses Google is they're the biggest round and they're the only one that's really doing this in large scale. There's a couple of small scale ones. There's OpenDNS mm -hmm. uh, and there's and there's a couple others that, that do something similar where they just do global DNS resolution outside of your local ISP, which all your local ISP is doing is looking at either Google or one of the other major registers um, to allow you to browse the internet. Um, so Cloudflare launching a, pub a public addressable DNS is pretty big news. Um, someone who's competing with Google. And they're touting this as a privacy first. We are not collecting your DNS requests to mine your data and sell you advertisements. We are not gonna redirect your DNS requests to more advertisements. We are not gonna direct advertisers to you in any way. Your data is your own, period, end of discussion. Do you know why this is so hard? Why? Why opening a public DNS is such a difficult task. DNS in and of itself is not a bandwidth heavy or bandwidth dependent service. Right. Um, the problem is when you get multi billions of computers pointing at you, it becomes a little bandwidth heavy. Um, it was also disclosed <laughs> this week in the, in the couple of days after this was announced and after this went live, it went live on April 1st. Such a great day to launch a new product. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> that uh, um, Cloudflare is dealing with 50 gigabit per second of junk data. That's ridiculous. 50 gigabits per second of data they take and they throw away. <laughs> it's impressive, really. Yeah. Uh, either bad DNS requests or DDoS attempts or any number of other anomalies, uh, o overhead for the service itself. 50 gigabit of data they throw away That's every crazy. second. That's crazy. Yep. That, but it's impressive though. I mean, yeah. that's what, it makes you wish that other big, like Google, for example. Right. Had that sort of, Google opens it up, but they also collect that data and help it to steer advertisers to your local area. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There, there's a lot of speculation on how deep Google's fingers go into a lot of things as far as Android phones. As I think far it's pretty as, deep. It's, it's a lot deeper than they disclose. I mean, you know, and it, you've heard the stories about this, but I've, I've been actually noticing it a lot more in the last two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. Where you know I'm not I'm not ashamed. I use my Google Assistant all the time. Right. Okay, Google can blah 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 blah. See, it, it just picked me. up. Right. <laughs> so it, it's always listening. Yeah. And I've noticed a couple times that I'm talking yeah, about my phone's something specifically. Always listening as well. Yeah. I'm watching a show, and it's like, man, you know, oh, I've seen her on whatever. No, 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 she was on this. Oh God, what's her name? You know, and you Google, and already it's like one of the top results. Mm -hmm. It's like. I can't and, think and, of he, example, and here's but. the problem with this is um let's say i was um i'm trying to think of something i don't own um let's say i was shopping for 
Volvo parts. I don't have a Volvo. I don't own a Volvo. I've never owned a Volvo in my life. I have never typed Volvo into a search engine. Right. But I'm going to say Volvo about 30 more times over the course of this video. Yeah, Volvo. Volvo. They're a great car company. You know, Volvo. They the... make Dota 2, right. CSGO. Well, they don't make CSGO. But... Right. No, they do. Well, I don't know if they made it, but yeah, they, they definitely... Did they? Yeah, they made CSGO. They didn't make the original Counter-Strike. That was a mod onto Half-Life. Right, and I know Counter-Strike Source was right. a Volvo thing. And then CSGO, though, I thought that was like a third party that was like... No, Counter-Strike of... Counter was a mod that got so popular that, that Volvo said, <laughs> said, hey, we would like to do that. Can we take your mod and sell it? And they said, yes, absolutely. And so they started selling Counter-Strike through the Val Volvo right. store. Right. Um, and then later on, Volvo created CSGO. Hmm. Um, so all the Volvo players could play with other Volvo players. Yeah. Um, Volvo, Volvo, Volvo. 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 Volvo? No, no, no. Sweden. Volvo. Swedish cars. <laughs> um, yeah, Swedish cars, not Swedish models. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Okay, my bad. My Swe bad. Swedish models of Swedish cars. Close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah close. Um, so I've said Volvo enough. I wonder if tomorrow in my search results I will see a Volvo car. <laughs> I always want to look at it right now. I'm just like itching to look at my phone. Right. Because that's the type of thing that I've noticed though. And it's weird because it's things that, like Volvo. Right. You don't have one in your driveway, but you're talking about it. You're thinking about it. And now you go to look it up. You type V and it's like Volvo. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, or I'm browsing a website that has Amazon ads delivered to it. Um, Hackaday is one that has Amazon ads delivered to it. Uh, Facebook has Amazon ads in, in your feed. Right. And I'll search for something on Amazon and I'll be scrolling through Facebook the next day and boom, there's, there's what I searched for. There, there's there's results for the the search term that I searched for in there. Um, what I'm curious of, and and the problem is there's no way to test this because I don't know the inner workings of what happens to my voice once my phone hears it, uploads that analytical data to Google. Did did my phone hear the words that I said accurately? But I could be talking about a Volvo, and tomorrow I will be scrolling through my Facebook feed, and there will be an ad for a Volvo car. Yeah. The thing is, you can't test it because it's confirmation bias. Absolutely. Oh, I remember talking about reason, this, and that's so funny that an ad showed up. That's oh. the only reason I don't like take it to the rooftops, is right. because it absolutely is confirmation bias, and and it's just like the idea. It's it's like this idea. Taking the car example even further, you go, oh, that's what a Volvo looks like, right? And then you see Volvos everywhere, right? See, I wonder if I mention a competitor like Saab now, if I'm going to start seeing Saab ads. <laughs> uh, Google's fingers better not go deeper than my prostate exam. <laughs> I hope that's true. Yeah, I really hope that's true. Although that's pretty deep. Yeah. Also, geez, what is Google doing up yeah. there? Gathering more data. Sounds like Google's got you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bad metaphor. I don't think that that's... <laughs> It's the one you should have leaned on there. <laughs> oh, God. Hmm. <laughs> Does Google wear gloves? That's yeah. what I want to know. Um, and it, the Except metaphor the only terms and conditions? Yeah. <laughs> and the metaphor only works if, uh, if you're a prostate, uh, exam prostate examiner. I meant to say... Oh, God, my brain today, Jeff. Oh, normally my recall of words is If so I'm a prostate better. examiner or a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> Maybe I'm both. I don't know. Probably. Um, you know, the only reason they make you do prostate exams at 50. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the metaphor only works if your proctologist is selling what he learns about you. <laughs> Could you imagine? He eats a lot of corn. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, we took that too far I took that too far sorry <laughs> that's alright um, god there's something else. whatever we can you meant to say girlfriend absolutely <laughs> absolutely <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm digging the unified chat it's helpful over there it is helpful I am a little sad that there are no Vero's on Twitch yep sorry yep that's alright it's my first stream on Twitch it's the first time I've ever used the channel so we're trying it'll happen next it'll time happen. next it'll time happen. i'm on we'll have lots of twitch viewers that's right uh exam's not so bad after a pint of bourbon <laughs> uh 
Uh, Under Armour <laughs> <laughs> discloses the exposure. Oh God. Okay. <laughs> discloses the exposure of 150 million MyFitnessPal accounts. Look, this is why you should never partake in fitness. That's right. No, no good will come of uh, of your fitness there. Um, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Not the biggest breach in recent history. No, not at all, but still. Yep. So, yeah. Um, if you have a MyFitness account. If you have a MyFitnessPal account, I'd probably go check your credentials, change your passwords, etc., etc. Make sure you're right. not using the same password for a frivolous service like MyFitnessPal right. that you are in your email. Make sure your email password is completely unique from any other password that you use. And make sure your financial passwords are completely unique from any other passwords that you use as well as well absolutely and it's 2018 you should be using a passphrase spaces help spaces help um length trumps all absolutely <laughs> and if you go look you can actually look at the statistics on this of passphrases versus passwords yep. in general and uh like you could just pound the keyboard at random you could freaking like roll a dice and like press the corresponding key no matter how random you think it is uh-huh Someone it is, has an algorithm to break it. Absolutely. Past phrases, though, you look at the statistics. Uh, some of the lengthier ones are unbreakable with current brute force techniques. Yep. So keep that in mind. Uh, what was XKCD? Battery horse staple correct? <laughs> <laughs> Batter- oh, damn it. Yeah. Backspace, backspace. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, what's really funny is a lot of... Sec- <sighs> We'll go into password security here real quick. I think that's a good segue. Okay. Um, uh, there's an XKCD comic. Um, let's go XKCD. Password. Password. Strength. Password. Here strength. it is, here number it is. one. Okay. Oh my God, did it hear us talking? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> right. So we've trained ourselves over the years to create passwords that are very difficult to remember and very easy for computers to guess. Oh, you've got to have a number and a symbol and your firstborn and... But don't use the year of your birth. Use the year of, like, an ancient relative's birth. Then not your mother's maiden name, but your sister's illegitimate father's mother's maiden name. In fact, just use a bunch of made-up things. Right. <laughs> and literally just, like, pound on the keyboard and randomly throw out ASCII characters. Right. Okay, that's what we've trained ourselves to do. Um, and as long as we meet the eight-character minimum, we're fine. The problem is an A versus an exclamation point versus a parenthesis versus a dash versus a nine versus a lowercase b versus an uppercase L is all the same eight bits to a computer. It's all the same. Yeah. Okay. Um, So using the example Troubadour N3 or 83 or whatever your replacement values may be, that's a short password that's fairly easily guessed by a computer. Uh, something that might take a day for for a computer to brute force, um, uh, or three days. And this was a number of years ago. So three days, a thousand guesses per second. Very simple. Okay. Versus length, which means if I have a lengthy password, um, it still has to guess each character correctly. So if my password is twenty eight characters, we we step away from the three days to the billions of years to compute to the billions of servers running tesla ai cores difficult uh to compute so now i would not use correct horse battery staple because that's probably in one of their algorithms (laughs) that's like yeah their algorithm is like right guess that first (laughs) but what i would use as a password is like Dog sidearm 1983 Troubadour. Okay? And all of a sudden, you have a password that you can create a phrase around that works for you, that you can remember. Don't use names, but use just random nouns, nouns, adjectives, whatever, to create your phrase that you can remember. Type in your phrase. Oh, look, it's 36 characters long. I can type it in simply because I can remember it. Right. If you need to meet complexity requirements, uh, throw a symbol or a space or a number or something like that in there. Something that, again, you can easily remember the placement of. 
Um, and you're golden. See, I think people, the mistake and comes then from... diversify your passwords as well. Yeah. Your email account, that is your recovery email account for your financial institutions yeah. and for any of your other services, should never be the same password as those services. Because if your email account gets leaked, you're screwed. And if one of those competing services, like let's say MyFitnessPal, for example, gets leaked, and that happens to be the same password that your email account uses, your email account has access and recovery access to your financial data. So the passwords that are vitally important to you are, are your financials and your email. Your email is probably the most important because it's Absolutely. the recovery point for all of your other passwords. Right. Just watch an episode of Mr. Robot and you'll know. That's exactly where he goes every time. Yep. <laughs> Straight to the email. <laughs> yep. Yep. So. <laughs> Tattered anus, Tattered 023. Anus, <laughs> Now, if tattered anus was two words, you're halfway to a good pass phrase. That's right. <laughs> Throw in a little Mr. Wizard and... Uh... <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. It's... No way, man. You're zero cool. It's funny because, you know, I think everybody has this idea of passwords being set. Like, you imagine a person sitting down at your computer. Mm -hmm. and they go, okay, if I'm Jeff, what's my password going to be? Jeff is awesome. Oh, hell yeah, that got me in, you know? Right, <laughs> right. But the do you, you want to know why physical access still trumps all for passwords? Is because next to my, my mother-in-law's computer is a desk drawer. And if you open that desk drawer, yep. there's a sticky note with all of her passwords written yeah. down. My first dog's name... One, two, three, four. Right. Exclamation mark. Right. So. Yeah, it's funny because I think of the generation above us, that's definitely how it goes. Yes. I can think of a dozen people right yep. now that got their passwords on an index card that's tucked away within five feet of their that, computer. That is nothing but their kids' names and the birth years of their kids with an exclamation point or an at sign. Oh, yeah. I know, they're really I know, clever. I know a couple of people who it's all of their kids' names, yeah. but each account is like a different order. Right. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Yep. So, password security. Learn it. Absolutely. A quick Google search. Or, you know what? Just look up this uh, XKC. Steve, comment. that's not a bad guess. <laughs> 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 well, now Jeff's got to cut the stream short and uh, go and change all of his passwords. Thanks, so, Steve. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give myself a little pat on the back for this next story. Okay? <laughs> right. A little pat on the back. Okay. So, the, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> little bring it attention to a long dead issue. All right. So, last week my video was what is the state of Steam OS in 2018? Is Valve still supporting it? Does it still exist? Can I still download it? How up to date is it? What is Steam OS and why does it exist in 2018? And my review was I like the core of the operating system. I like what they're trying to do. The problem is they don't have any developer or user support on it, which means they've ceased developing the user interface. It's still clunky, but what is there is good. That is, that is my too long, didn't watch review of that. Um, uh, <laughs> Craft Computing's uh, Twitch account password, love for big dongs. God, I'm gonna have to change that. <laughs> Hey, can you guys quit screwing up his passwords here? Yeah. God. Next week, it's just going to be a live video stream of Jeff changing all of his yeah. passwords in silence. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what I thought was me bringing attention to SteamOS and Steam all of a sudden removing SteamOS and Steam Machines from their directory listings. <laughs> um I went, wow, I, all of a sudden my video has like 70,000 views and, it, and Steam went, wow, that's still on the main page? We didn't mean for that. Let's pull that. Um, I went, wow, hold it. What are the chances that that happens in the same week? Um, so I, I, I was feeling like really good for about a day. And today Valve actually released an official statement regarding the removal of those, <laughs> those from their... Uh, um, their their main page and basically what it says is no 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 we are still fully committed to a linux infrastructure future 
that includes both Steam OS and Steam uh, hardware, so Steam machines. Um, uh, we simply removed it from our main page due to it wasn't receiving enough traffic to justify its position there, which kind of goes back to my point about no one's using it. No one's going to Steam and downloading Steam OS and installing it on their machines. I mean, do you know anybody using it? No. Right, exactly. So there you go. <laughs> right. What's really funny is I thought it was a very unique topic to tackle. There's like two other YouTubers who tackled it less than a week after I tackled it. Um, one guy actually bought a Steam machine the same week that I reviewed Steam OS and, and posted a review like three days later about Steam Machine and why are they still selling an Alienware with a 960 2 gig card in 2018 and does it work and how's the OS work and it was a really great great view um, but uh, yeah it was just kind of <laughs> kind of interesting that I post something on Steam and all of a sudden it no no we don't do that anymore oh wait we totally do that still but we're not gonna like advertise that we do it still. right <laughs> that's that's bizarre you know I had a similar experience. When did you post that video last week? Uh, the 23rd. So yeah, about a week ago. Just over a week ago. So a couple days after that, I watched Laura Ingram for the first time. Uh -huh. I woke up the next morning and like a dozen of her uh, advertising sponsors had pulled their support. It was the biz most bizarre thing ever. So if, it, if there's anybody that uh, you want me to watch, media you want me to consume Stay for the first off time. off of my channel. <laughs> Don't Too you late, Jeff. ever watch one I'm of my videos, videos again? again. <laughs> I just I thought that was so funny. I didn't even know her name. I watched her for the first time because my hotel it was like all that was playing, and I wake up the next morning and it's all over the news. I'm like, what are the odds? I mean, it kind of goes back to that not necessarily confirmation bias, but you learn a, the model of a car and now yeah. you see it everywhere. Yes, probably what it is, but so it just made me laugh. I, I will say <laughs> in in November of last year, I bought myself one of my dream cars. Um, it, it's a car that I've wanted since I first saw it on the road, since I first saw it in the dealership. Um, I bought a 2003 Toyota MR2 Spyder. I love the car. I got the exact model that I wanted. I got the exact configuration that I wanted. Yeah. Um, sought this car out, paid more than I wanted to pay for it. But I went, I'm in a position I can buy a car that is just for fun and commuting. And I have a, I have a truck still that, <laughs> that I don't have to drive and yeah. spend 16 miles to the gallon to commute to work. Um, I can just drive my spider everywhere. And I love the thing. But now I see them everywhere. Oh no. <laughs> uh, and it's really fun because I know for a fact there were only like 27,000 MR2 spiders sold in the United States from 2000 to 2005. I looked up the statistics. 10,000 of them are in. There were only 7,000 from 2000 to 2005 sold. And the 2003 model, uh, they changed from the 2002. They changed the color on the grill intakes and they changed a couple of the body features. They changed the front bumper, they added fog lights, the standard, and they changed the rear bumper skirt. Right. And I'm seeing more of the 2003s than I ever have before. It's like, there's only 7,000 of these in the States. There's no way there's five of them within driving distance of me. <laughs> but sure enough. That's ridiculous. <laughs> there's got to be a database we should find and look up all the people that own this car. Totally should. Um, let's see. Uh, someone said this could to our password talk could totally tie into social engineering talk. Yes. Social engineering is actually more prevalent than it has ever been yeah. in the hacking community. Um, I work for an organization that is not huge, but has enough data in it to be valuable. Um, and the thought before in, in security was, we're too small a target to ever be hit. Why would anyone deal Absolutely with us? Absolutely not. Um, we got an email. Uh, we've gotten four of these email attacks now that are from our CEO to our business director saying, hey, I need every employee's W-2 from the last year as well as their financial information. And I need this for a report and it's due at midnight tonight and I'm really sorry to hit you with this so late, but can you can you put this together and, and I need to crunch this data and I'm at this conference right now and... My yeah. response to an email like that is always, sorry, you should have hit us up before today. <laughs> right, well you would think that, but here's the thing. Is oh, this no. an email from your CEO? Oh no on a Friday afternoon. So they time the emails. They time the emails for, what they will do is they will look at public relations events related to your company to find out when your CEO is not gonna be around. 
And so That's they smart. and so they will and so usually it's like oh your CEO has an office just down the hall from your business manager, and so if you get a weird email from your CEO, you can go, hey, hey John, did you just send me an email? And they go no, and you go oh, okay, delete that one. But no, John's out of town, and all of a sudden you get a critical email from John that says I need all of this information, and I'm really sorry, but it's for this report, and it's due at midnight, and I completely put it off, and. Won't you just be the most model employee and and put this this report together for me, for for me your loving caring boss, um, and and like I said they do it on a Friday afternoon so they have all weekend to do with the data whatever they want to do with the data. See something that I do is security consulting and I don't like talking about what I do mm -hmm. uh, live but John spoiled that last week so if you really want to know go look up that episode episode twenty five apparently twenty five. Um, and so part of what I do kind of on the side of that is security consulting. And mm -hmm. that includes almost every client that I've ever had putting in place protocols for emails like that. Mm -hmm. But phone calls are huge too. Yes. Phone calls are huge. Yep. You get people calling in. We, uh, one of my clients had a person calling in posing as the person, uh, as the company rather, who installed their security cameras and their DVR. Yep. And they said, hey, look, we're with blah, blah, blah company. You know, we did your cameras. And for some reason, they're down right now. We need you to go and we need you to go right to your router and look at all this stuff and give us that information. Yep. Or whatever. It's like, yep. come on. And But the problem is, is if one of my people wasn't there, yep. they absolutely would have done it. Totally. Um, I mean, in the movie Hackers, the opening scene <laughs> I can is, shut down Intel. <laughs> the opening scene is Dave Murphy calling up the cable company, and yeah, my boss is really up my ass about this report I got to get done. And hey, could you read me the little number on the side of the white box there? Absolutely. And he reads the number to being a dutiful security officer, knowing that jackass CEO, you know, always has his thumb on me, and I just want to help out this guy that he's got the same thumb on. And it's quick. You could be the most dutiful person ever, but it is quick. How fat? How your brain turns around mm -hmm. so quickly the moment you're presented with all of this information. And you want to trust people. I think that's our natural inclination. You want to trust people. You want people. to trust and you want to help. And especially if they're friendly. Yes. Especially if they're friendly. I had a guy today, I called Comcast of all companies today because mm -hmm. I'm moving. My current ISP isn't where mm -hmm. I'm going to be, so I had to deal with Comcast. But I got the nicest guy. And he goes, okay, well, you know. And of course, I always get skeeved out a little bit when they're like, well, we need your social security number and blah, blah, blah. Well, anyway. And I'm going with it. I give him my birth date. And he goes, no way. We're born on the same day. Instant best friends, right? Right, right. Imagine, that's all the tiniest One piece of powers information. activate. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Just imagine, though. That's all the information that that person needed to give me before I thought, in my mind, oh, this person's totally trustworthy, right? Right. You can get that information from anywhere. Right. It's on my Facebook account, for God's sake. Somebody calls me up and they say, Hey, Brett, hey, hey, what's your birthday? Right. So is mine. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. No way. Well, we're birthday bros. Besties. Hey, we're the same sign. So clearly I can trust you. <laughs> but it's that easy. And all of these types of people, social engineers, you know, they carry around a copy of Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. <laughs> and they use all 15 of their little tricks or however many That's it is right. in there, you know? And... The idea has been around for a long, long time. And what's the guy's name? Uh, Frank uh, Abagnale. Yeah. He's featured in the movie... Uh, Catch Me If You Catch Can. Catch Me If You Can. Great and, movie. Great movie. And the show White Color in USA is based yeah. off of that character. And they run all these classic cons that are not based on having access to anything. It's, have, it's, it's this idea of social engineering. Yep. One of his biggest cons, one of his first cons, which was hugely successful... He went to a costume store and bought a costume of a security guard and sat by the drop box for the bank mm -hmm. with a sign over it that said, the drop box is out of service, leave your money with the security guard. Yep. And every single person with a cash bag who was turning in that cash bag for the retail organization that they worked for that night went, oh, oh, he looks like a security guard. Yeah. Here you go, sir. Absolutely. Trusting, want to help, don't want to make a phone call. I, I want to make my boss happy, and if I don't drop this off, and if I call him in the middle of the night, he's going to be upset with me. Absolutely. I got to do what the sign says. Absolutely. Now, they could have just moved the sign and put their money in it and been like, better safe than sorry. Because like how, how does a drop box not close? Work, right? 
You know, it's there. It's you a can... metal chute that lands in like a recycling bin on the other side. But that doesn't matter. You put the sign over the chute, all yep. these things, and all of a sudden, oh. It... Yep. And that was in the 60s. Yep. The... And it's only gotten, I mean, I won't say it's gotten more advanced by any means, but now we have cell phones, right? right? And you combine social engineering with legit computer hacking, yep. and you've got some very, very scary situations out there. Yep. So. Like you were saying before, uh, the physical access, part of it. It's yep. a huge part of it. Yep. Um, there's a, uh, God, what is the guy's name? Uh, Johnny, got a really simple name and I never remember it. Johnny Long. Uh, he, uh, he's spoken at DEF CON a couple of times. Oh, uh, right. He, he does a talk on YouTube, which is, you should look it up. It's a DEF CON talk called No Tech Hacking. It's an hour long and it is totally worth the watch. The The audio video quality on the video is terrible, but he is worth watching the entire hour because what he does is he walks you through a basic course in social engineering and why people are trusting and why we do the things we do. And one of the best stories he tells is on the security system that uh, he used to do penetration testing and uh, which is trying to break into a building at the request of the building. Right. And, and so they, they will say, hey, test our security system. Can you get into our building and take a picture of yourself from the server room kind of thing? And, uh, and then we need to adjust our security accordingly. Um, so he goes, I was out with his buddy and we were doing a pen test on this building and they had just installed this multi-million dollar uh, in, entry and exit door um, that was so strong you could drive a Mack truck into it and the truck would bounce. <laughs> um, and he goes... And the thing was biometric and RFID and everything else. And, and every time the door opened, you hear this ka -chunk! And, and it was these large uh, electromagnetic cylinders that were popping out of the door and like a giant safe opening and things like that. And uh, he goes, we're watching this building for like 30 minutes and just watching people coming in and out. And his buddy goes, we got to go back to the hotel. He goes, okay, that's weird. And so they drop back to the hotel and the guy comes out with a coat hanger and a wet washcloth. <laughs> Okay, so the whole time uh, Johnny is going, is he gonna like buy, like bring out like this RFID scanner decoder card writer thing? Is am I gonna put a, like a false eye for Mission Impossible? <laughs> you know what? What is this guy gonna do? He walks up to this multi-million dollar door, and he puts the the wet washcloth into the end of the hook, and he fishes down another door, and he starts flapping it around, and the door goes kachunk, and he opens the door and he walks in. <laughs> what happened was he noticed that the push door or the, the push egress on the door was capacitive. Mm. <laughs> okay. So it was based on electro mm. or on electronic <laughs> resistance. So if I short out the handle on that door, it's not a contact where I, where I have to push like a bar on a door. It's just an electrical contact that shorts a ground somewhere that fires the locks that opens the door. So he bested a multi-million dollar security door with a wet washcloth and a, and a coat hanger. <laughs> this is what people have been doing since the dawn of history. Right. Finding a way around things. He also goes, do you know how I, the other way I could have gotten in that door? He goes, ninja trick, walk in through a puff of smoke. Walk in through the smoker's entrance. Walk, walk up to the people who are smoking outside the one door. You'll always find like three or four of them just... <sighs> you just stand there for a few and smoke. What, what you do is, is you walk up and you grab your cigarette and you go... Damn, you got a lighter on you. I left mine in the car. Yeah, yeah, no problem. You strike up a friendly conversation. Absolutely. They open the door and you walk in behind them. Absolutely. <laughs> it's crazy. Yep. And we all do it. I've worked in so many places uh, or worked with places all the time where the sheer act of having the right colored shirt on mm -hmm. and looking like you belong. Yes. Confidence is number one. I always think to me, it's always walking around with a scowl on too. Yeah. Like you looking, walk around like looking a slightly inconvenienced. Oh God. Yeah. It goes so far. You don't walk with your hands relaxed. You ball them up a little bit. Right. You don't like let your arms kind of wave. No, you're moving them. Right. Yep. And you just got a scowl on your face. Nobody will talk to you. Yep. God, that guy's having a bad day. He's got a clipboard and looks like he's pissed off at someone. I don't want to mess with him. <laughs> That's my boss's problem now. Right. Exactly. <laughs> So um, he also showed a, uh, a badge that he printed that was uh, an AT&T badge with his face and name on it. His face and his legal name. It said Johnny Long on it. He goes, this card has gotten into me, me into more buildings than I can count. AT&T doesn't make house calls to inspect your cable closet. 
But if you show your badge and go on with at and I need into your MDF. Absolutely. They'll go, oh, absolutely. You, you must know what you're doing. I've done technician work and, uh, on, with certain places, and I have a legit name badge and all right. that stuff. And I say, look, I'm Rhett with so-and-so. Mm -hmm. I have a scheduled appointment today, which is the truth. I'm right. not lying. Right. And they're like, I don't see you in here. And it's like, so what? Look. You expect me to come back tomorrow? <laughs> Well, uh, and it's like, John already, to, John already put me out two weeks. Do not make me come back here. I drove two and a half hours to be here, and now you're going to turn me away? No, no, no. If I don't get paid for this, I'm going to talk to your boss, and I'm going to tell him that Bob said that I couldn't come in to do my job. Right. And okay. all of a sudden, <laughs> you have gone from someone who is a security threat to someone who is inconvenienced, and you have the ability to help. <laughs> To make their inconvenience go away, to make your boss happy, Absolutely. and all I did was social engineer my way into your wiring closet. See, and the sad thing is, I didn't do anything that was, you know, bad for them or whatever, but I still did that full well knowing, you know, what I was what I was doing, and then essentially I'm like weakening the chains a little bit as it is. I, I worked for a company for a, a number of years that required us to carry ID on premises at all times, to, to wear ID at all times. I didn't wear mine. Do you know how long it took them for, for one person to stop me in the hall and say, hey, should you actually be here? Guess how long? <coughs> Probably, I don't know. In my mind, it's like weeks. <laughs> but who knows? Oh, months. Years. Oh, God. De no, I'm kidding. Uh, Four years. <laughs> Four years. I was stopped once in my first four years of employment with a company that requires you to wear identification around your neck at all times. <laughs> four years. I used to do uh, post security back in the day, yeah. which is like, you know, rent a cop type stuff. And I'm right. I was working at some factory or sawmill or something uh -huh. like that. And got to the point over the years where I'm a little jaded and well it turns out the uniform doesn't ma matter nearly as much as people say and I remember one time showing up without wearing my my um your blue, duty my your duty blue belt gold. well it was yeah. the belt in particular yeah. you know and I show up and somebody stopped me and they go sir um who do you work for and I told them the company and they go I can see that by your uniform I'm just a little curious you're not wearing your standard issue uniform and I said no sir I, I absolutely am and he goes you're not wearing your belt. You don't have a belt? And I said, no, I do. I just never wear it because nobody's ever here. And that was probably like two, two and a half years worth of never yeah. wearing that damn thing. Somebody called me out. It turned out he was one of the higher ups in the company, luckily. But it was just one of those weird things where yeah. somebody notices that weird, minute detail. Exactly. And that's all it takes. Right. And, and when your standard dress is a button down and a tie and an ID badge around your neck, you can fool anyone. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the greatest quote is you can go anywhere you want if you look important and carry a clipboard. Yeah, clipboard. You, you can get into any closet. You can unlock any door. You can go anywhere you want. And, and I'd add on to that looking slightly inconvenienced. Oh, absolutely. I don't want to be absolutely. here. I just throw three hours to wait 30 minutes on your ass to, to verify my appointment time. I just need to get in this closet for five minutes and then I can go about my day. See, one of my mentors told me, he, he used the phrase, uh, walk around like a rooster. Yeah. That's what he always said. He's like, you look, like you look like a rooster. Nobody will talk to you. Yep. Nobody will get in your way. No one will stop you. So that's what I do. Yep. <laughs> Chest out a little bit, shoulders back, chin up. Yep. That's exactly right. And I think the fists, balled up fists are the big one. Balled up fists. Yeah, that absolutely works. <laughs> that subconscious sign that says, don't ask me any questions. <laughs> You, One more question. I will burn this place to the ground. That's right. <laughs> uh, it's too much. We cruised through the news a lot faster than I did. I got I got two more news articles, one of which I only have an article for. Um, this one's just kind of an interesting point. Uh, Mozilla announced, again, not an April Fool's joke, that uh, <laughs> Firefox Reality is an open source augmented reality and virtual reality web browser that they are going to be bringing to market. Um, so, so it's going to be like Futurama's web browsing. Right, like the iPhone? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> I know my Futurama, even the later seasons. Uh, the iPhone one that was a good that was a great episode. That was a great actually. episode. But the, even in the earlier seasons, they're like, "We gotta go onto the web," and he's like, "Oh, okay." And then they, I can't remember how they do it, but they're like, "Oh, in, no, they put on the the VR headset." Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Where, oh, because uh, that's the episode where he downloads Lucy Liu. Lucy Liu, yeah. <laughs> Let's go on to eBay. Where is that? There it is. <laughs> I don't care who you are. That is some top uh, comedy right there. Kidnapster. <laughs> that screwed up. <laughs> I know my Star Trek, but I really know my Futurama. Futurama is right behind Star Trek for me. Yep. <laughs> In fact, I'm sure we probably mentioned it like three or four times, but one of our first interactions at Capitol Tap Room was spitballing with Chuck about Futurama, uh, Futurama quotes. quotes. <laughs> Going back and forth and who could one up the next. That was before Netflix took off the first five seasons, That's right. sadly. So. Well, I got my own Plex server with all of them on it. Oh, there you go. Lucky you. And I have Living a tutorial for how to set up Plex on your own FreeNAS box. So you can follow my link to That's Craft Computing true. YouTube page and find out how to set up a home server yourself. I won't tell you where to get the episodes from, but if you uh, sail the seven seas, I'm sure you can figure that out. Absolutely. I have that video bookmarked for right. the future. So. Now, now... I will say, I did not download the Futurama episodes. I own the DVD collection. I do, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although now I'm moving, and it's like one of these things where I have all these DVDs, and I'm like, do I really need these? Right. I was thinking about getting rid of my DVD no, Futurama. No, I, I will never. <laughs> That's a collectible. It goes on the shelf. Absolutely. Um, I, I've, I've got some, some DVD collectibles that, that I just won't get rid of. I've, I've, got, uh, I've got all my Star Wars episodes on DVD. Um, I've got the Matrix trilogy on DVD. I've gotten the Matrix. I've got. Uh, I have the Lord of the Rings extended edition Blu-rays. I'll never release those. Bold of you. I haven't made the commitment yet for the Blu-rays. Oh, you you, you got to do the Blu-ray. It's it's worth it. I've listened to every commentary on the extended edition DVDs. I haven't quite listened. And to there's them all. like a dozen. I, I've listened to a number. <laughs> the the problem with the commentaries is I think 80% of them, like like you said, there's about 12 commentaries, and I think eight or nine of them are literally commentaries that take the full length of the extended edition. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Right. And so it's listening to the director, and then it's listening to their art director, and then it's listening to the, the costuming guy. Then yeah, it's listening they've got to the like CGI the guy. they got like the set people. Yeah. They have... Uh, They've got the cast, of course, which right. is a fun one to listen to because yeah. you listen to Ian McKellen talking about... Oh, he was drunk off his ass during this take. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> you know. And it's and see, and I think they did it right where it's almost in that like podcast format where it's uninterrupted. Yes. Yeah. See, because I remember... They're just spitballing the whole time and the, the movie's in the background. And so you're watching right. this with sometimes some context, sometimes no context. Commentary is my, is my favorite thing and is actually the number one reason I got into podcasting there was only one matrix movie that's true the first one is the best i really wish they would have made sequels now i will say the animatrix i love the animatrix animatrix is amazing if Absolutely. you haven't seen the animatrix go buy it it's nine short films based on the origins of the matrix or a continuation of the matrix series go watch that there is not a single bad short film on no there. all of them are phenomenal yeah, even there's some that I will say because I'm a huge fan of anime already. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some where the animation style is even just a little much for me. Yeah. But then again, you're only dealing with it for twelve five to ten 12 minutes. minutes. Yeah, yeah. You know? And there are some that are so good. Yeah, there's some. The origin stories are just yeah, the whole lead magnificent. Up, the whole lead up to the uh, war between yeah. uh, machines and humans. Amazing. It's a yep. two parter. Yep. There's the one where. I don't know. I think about this almost every day. The one, I can't remember exactly the point of it, but where she's trying to find her cat yeah. at one point. That's like one of my favorites. The animation style is so charming. Yes. And uh, and then, of course, you get to learn the origins of the guy who annoys the shit out of Neo in the second one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where he says in the movie, very cryptically, I told you, I didn't save you. You saved yourself. Right. And then you find out why he says that. God damn you, Cypher. Yeah, Red is a huge fan of anime? Oh, no! Yeah, it's true. Uh, there's yeah. a new season of Fooly Cooly coming out here shortly, so looking forward to that. I'm not nearly the anime fan I used to be. I, I watched some anime in high school, mostly because my friends were into it, and, and I would sit around and, and, yeah. and watch it with them. I, I didn't... I haven't watched much since then. See, I, I'm kind of the same way. I have a huge problem with current animation styles. Mm -hmm. 
And you would think like somebody who's into anime wouldn't be bothered, right? But it, I personally prefer the older animation styles. Yeah. Um, my favorites, and listen to me go on about this, I always call it the golden age of anime. Yeah. But probably a lot of people who are into anime currently would be like, you're stupid, anime is great now. But it's like that, that like, there's some in the 80s that are so good, but then like mid 90s to early 2000s is like the prime time in my, yep. in my idea yep. of like the perfect age of anime you got like cowboy bebop cowboy bebop fully coolie became one of my favorites yep. and there's just so many so many good ones right in there and then after that it's like i don't know and maybe it's just me and it's like maybe my only exposure is from netflix where i look at some of this mm -hmm. stuff and i'm like really yeah. that's what the t that's the uh the the topics of these animes uh, mm -hmm. i'm not quite into that yeah you know? so uh Trigun is great. That was one of my favorites from back in the day. Although I'm always hesitant to say Trigun because it, it you know, it was on Adult Swim and all this, and it's like a little Let's childish see. or whatever. But. Oh, we're we're getting into uh, some uh, Star Trek ordering here, and they're throwing in Futurama for good mix. Uh, so Reverend Arrow, who's uh, one of my Patreon backers and on Discord, how's it going, man? Uh, says probably goes the Next Generation DS9 Futurama Voyager original series. It goes TNG then Futurama. Then DS9, I guess. I mean, I really like Voyager, but... Ooh. I'm in the minority. I put DS9-1. Oh, I put DS9-1. I put DS9-1. Well, you're wrong. I put DS9-1. They both get good at the same time. Although I really like they season get good two. At, they get good at the same time. And I will say season two of, of, DS, of uh, TNG is fantastic. Yeah. In its own campy way. Yeah. Um, but I will say no show on television ever has a better four through seven seasons than DS9. Nothing. Nothing, nothing. End of discussion. I don't care about Locutus. I don't care about the War of the Year of Hell. I don't care about anything that happened on any other Star Trek. DS9, Dominion War, Trump's all. I can't argue. You can't argue with it. With your opinion. Which... <laughs> <laughs> oh... No, don't get me wrong. I, I love DS9. Me yeah. and it's like at back of the tap room. Me and John used to go back and forth about this all the time. Yeah. It's like he loves. He was always trying to like. Pitch he loves DS9 TNG. To me. Yeah. Well, he was trying to get me on DS9, and it's like, look, I get it. DS9 is great. TNG. So then it got to the point where we'd only talk TNG because right. he just gave up and trying right. to figure it out. Yeah. Oh. Go back to this again. Absolutely. It's only an hour 46. I warned people it would be a two-hour show tonight. We had a lot of news. We actually got through most of our news. No, I meant you were back to the Star Trek. Of oh, course. yeah. It never goes away. <laughs> My wife, of all people, is surprised we're talking about Star Trek again. My favorite Star Trek character, however, is Obi-Wan Kenobi. So... I'd go Gandalf. <laughs> <laughs> I can't... Okay, well, yeah, uh... Very, very close yeah. in my book. I mean, yeah. there's only a few people who... The gray, not the white. <laughs> there's only a few people who could deliver the cheesy line, uh, do or do not, there is no try, as well as Gandalf. So, uh, uh, I got nothing for that one. <laughs> I was gonna try to throw a Doctor Who reference. But I, I lost. I was oh, trying. Oh, right. I was trying to take it away from Star Wars to Doctor Who, but I couldn't think of one I, either. So I was I, like, Yoda, Yoda, quickly! <laughs> I was going mechanical dog. What's the? <laughs> Surely I can get something in there. No, no, no it all just went fleeting. No. Uh, fezzes are cool. I wear fezzes now. Yeah, it's all right. Uh, of course, we're talking about Star Trek. Yeah. What I, else is there to talk about? Who do you really? think I am? Uh, I think we'll wrap up with my last tech point, which I actually didn't bring up a slide for. Uh, Vive Pro official pricing for not just the headset, but the whole package was announced. Oh, right, week. right, yeah. right. $1,100. Not bad. Not good. Really? You I think so? I, way too Be high. What, do you, what was your ideal pricing? 800 bucks for the full package. What does the full package in include? The full package includes the Vive headset itself, the controllers and the lighthouses, and then all the cabling and boxes and things like that. Here's my problem. Here's my problem. Okay, okay, let's hear it. As someone who has been invested into VR since the original Oculus DK1, I, I was a backer for DK1, I was a backer for DK2, I bought a Vive at the initial retail release, okay? Um, I don't have an Oculus a CV1, but 
I've been invested in VR for a long time, okay? DK1 to DK2, monumental leap in quality, monumental leap in tracking. It gave us 3D positional tracking. Sure. Um, still didn't have any hand tracking, um, for which I relied on a Razer Hydra, which was an awesome setup, and playing Half-Life 2 in VR is an amazing experience, should they ever bring it back. Moving from DK2 with a Razer Hydra to the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift, which I've tried both extensively, right. and I own an HTC Vive, also monumental leap forward. Okay, and totally worth the three hundred to four hundred to eight hundred dollar price increases. Totally worth it at every step of the way. Okay, the price increase from eight hundred to eleven hundred between the HTC Vive at original retail and the HTC Vive Pro is not worth it. Period. I have tried an HTC Vive Pro. Yeah. I have put one on my head and walked around it with it for about ten minutes. Yeah. Not worth it. Okay, I guess. See, for some reason, I guess it's like when I lo was looking at everything that was included with it, I was thinking the price point would be higher. So mm -hmm. you say 1100 bucks, I'm like, okay. It is too high from where the other VR headsets are positioned in the market. Do you think this is The, the original HTC Vive is down to 600 bucks now. Do you think that's going to hurt their mission? Either that's going to hurt their sales? I or? think HTC is looking for a way out of the market. I think they're looking to sell the company off. Oh. I think they're looking to spin off their VR division to someone else. Okay. That's what I think. I think they're going, we're done with this. Oh, shoot, we have to spin off this company to someone else. Let's sell the prof Let's sell the division for $1.5 and be done with it. So I think that's their end goal in all this, and this is pure speculation. Um, but it's the only reason they've kept their price so high. Um, the okay. original Vive came out at, at $800. The original Oculus Rift was $830 if you got the three sensors to be competitive with the HTC Vive. The Oculus then dropped to $600, then to $500, then to $400. And in fact, you can get it as low as $300 sometimes with some gift card add-ins and store purchases and things like that. Sure. Um, the HTC Vive has dropped from $800 to $600. At $600, it is still the best performing all-around VR headset on the market today, period. End of discussion. If you want to get into VR, that is the one to buy. It is the most compatible. It is the best overall experience. Um, so we're looking at $600 for the HTC Vive versus a $500 premium for a 78% resolution increase mm. that does not eliminate the screen door effect. That does not increase your field of view. That does not have any additional tracking features. That does not have any additional pass-through features. That is, sure, it comes with the audio strap, which is kind of cool. Sure. But if that, Okay, I, I see where you're there. coming from now. Yeah. That is a monumental price leap. And for mm -hmm. some reason, I guess I was just thinking that, well, okay, you're getting the whole package and you're getting some extra features and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. But you're getting the original controllers and the original Lighthouse units, so the 1.0 units, um, just in the higher end package. Those aren't worth it either. Right. I mean, they're selling the HTC Vive Pro by itself for $800. I wouldn't spend $800 on that, and I certainly wouldn't spend a $500 premium on it trying to, if I was entering the market for the first time. Right. I'd get an HTC Vive at $600. Yeah. The experience is 85 to 90% there. And the added resolution, 78% increase in resolution. It helped in the fringes of, of my vision. It didn't improve everything. Right. And, and the screen door effect is still the most detrimental thing to VR. Until they solve that... VR is going to stay in this weird state of the enthusiast, the fringe, the whatever else. Um, only 0.4% of people on Steam own VR. 0.4. Yeah, it's not. It's so we're not still talking yet. about the upper half percent of the 1%. Um, and so it's, it, it's not there. Fair enough. So until they solve that problem, you're not getting an $1,100 premium out of me. Fair enough. I think that's a good place to end it. I'm glad we talked about that before I totally uh, went out and bought one. No. <laughs> I would still buy the original HTC Vive. And in fact, if you're looking to get into VR for the first time and you're not sure you want to drop 600 bucks, Windows Mixed Reality headset. You can get the Acer headset for 250 bucks. Great experience. Nice. Great experience. And and requires less out of your hardware too. Yeah. It's not quite as uh, as universal for compatibility as far as Steam VR goes. Um, but you can still play a fair amount of games. Nice. Um, and the tracking was amazingly good for what's required. And it's the most plug and play experience. You put the headset on and it has a cable that runs directly to your computer. 
and you pick up the controllers and you're done. There's no screwing things into walls, running additional cabling, Good to which go. is what's required of the Oculus and the HTC. Good to go. So 250, as long as you have a GTX 1050 Ti or higher, which if you've watched my reviews on those videos, you know where the power scales or you can look up GPU benchmarks. If you have a 1050 Ti, get a Windows Mixed Reality headset. Hell yeah. Can't go wrong. Nice. Thank you, everyone. Episode 26, Talking Heads in the Books. We appreciate it. It's been a good night. We didn't get to drink that beer. No, we mm. didn't. It's too bad. Hmm. Maybe uh, Maybe off camera. <laughs> now we're thinking. Now we're thinking. Yeah. Right, well, if you guys want to donate some money now, uh, we'll drink on camera. But otherwise... <laughs> <laughs> Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> Quick! Bam, 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 bam. We have our volunteers on standby accepting your calls right That's now. That's right. In the arms <laughs> of an angel. I guess one thing real quick for us. Oh, yeah. You mentioned this a while ago. Last episode. So everybody's like, why are you holding this pipe bomb, Rhett? Yeah. Uh, last time I was Great, on... Great, now I'm going to get a YouTube strike. Right. Thanks. Four weeks ago, I mentioned that I made a stupid, cheap prop lightsaber hilt and here it is uh i made it when i was a young boy probably like 15 years ago now at this point i guess here we, I, go. Here we go uh when i this 15 years ago now at this point and uh yeah there's nothing that's actually stuck on there more than just like friction it's all press fit <laughs> yeah exactly so i have some like uh plumber's tape in there to fit some things together and uh yeah, these teeth are like mashed. I mashed this in with like a rubber mallet on the end here. Yeah. So this is my sweet lightsaber. If I ever go to uh, Comic-Con, I'll cosplay as a Jedi Master. There you so, go. Yeah, it, it was fun to make and fun to have on the bedside nightstand. So. Awesome. Well, I can't compete with that. Mine was a <laughs> PVC pipe with some duct tape on it. This is literally just like... See, the problem is is I've got parts from three different aisles at the hardware store. Right. It's like I've got a sink pipe here. Yeah, that's a downspout. Pipe. Right. Yeah. And then uh, I've got some uh, gardening hose stuff here on the top. And yeah. then the rest is like... Well, I guess this is probably... Well, I don't think it's sink stuff, but it's definitely indoor plumbing I'm digging stuff. the O-rings, though. Yeah, Those right? Nice it stuff. makes it look nice. I had more on, but they're getting old, and you can kind of see if you look yeah, closer. They're starting to crack. Cracking. Getting a little dry. Yeah, so I had a lot more, and the O-rings actually are what added the most flavor to make it seem believable right. from far away. So. And yeah, someone pointed out Vive is only five or four ninety nine now, because they oh. ordered it again from the $600 price one, because it was five ninety nine over the entire winter period, and I believe in February they dropped it to four ninety nine. There you go. Uh, so yeah. $600 premium for the Vive Pro. It ain't there. It's not worth it. It's not there. I've tried the Vive Pro. I own an HTC Vive. I'm not a buyer. I'm glad you said something before I went out and spent all that That's money. That's exactly right. That's why you watch this channel. Thanks, guys. It's been a lot of fun. Yep. Uh, next time, uh, same time, 8 o'clock Pacific, uh, we'll have John on the show. Uh, we'll try to do something cool. I don't know what we're doing yet. We'll see. Uh, we'll obviously re review the, the week in beer and tech news. And uh, we'll see what interesting things we come up with to drink. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. We'll see you later. Have a good one. All right. Now, how do I stop this one?